so how was the yoga class? Wasn't it good? Narinjan. Something good. Oh, you are on your favorite spot. <coughs> The set of exercise we did this morning, <clears throat> you think you can make as a woman part of your life? There are four, five sets in it. <clears throat> if you take those four, five sets and decide it yourself, that each one of that you will do each day for 31 minutes, doesn't matter what. You know what I'm saying? I don't think anybody of you will ever age. <coughs> Aging brings down what you call slowness. Aging. There are two things which are destructive in a female life. One is aging and one is passion. <laughs> passion pulls you out of your skin. Passion, passion has destroyed you more than you can afford to be destroyed. <laughs> if you look at your own history, each one of you, you will find out that wherever you have become a victim, or you have been destroyed, or you have suffered, where your passion has overtaken your sense of normalcy. You got to... The problem which I find in each woman is she wants somebody to figure it out for her. It doesn't exist. Now, there's a fundamental dispute on this issue. <laughs> each woman wants somebody to figure out for her. Actually, each woman has to figure out for herself. <laughs> what you have to figure out? What you can give up to get what? <clears throat> you can't have all. You can't have all. You have to come to a balance between a career, between your love life, between your future, between your today, between your yesterday. You have to. You have to do it called as war planning. Listen, it's not a peace planning. It's a war planning and it has to be done on war footing. I do it very well. With me, it is automatic nature. All right, there are certain faculties you should write it down and understand them. You're not going to understand right away, but just understand. Now I'm giving you something very important in life. You, in the beginning, long dash, you in the end. You in the beginning, you in the end. It means I in the beginning, I in the end, right? That's how you write. I 
in the beginning, I in the I in the beginning innocent. I in the end innocent plus sacred. Okay. <clears throat> then write down I and underneath write down child, youthful, old. Child, youthful, old. With the child write down education, education career, with the youthful, life, career, security, responsibility, personality, planning. With the old age, write down livelihood, career, security, responsibility, retirement, protection, secure environments, help, fortification, Now, underneath, write down in the childhood, emotions and desires, imaginary and practical, and in the middle age, ambition and desires, social and personal, practical and non-practical. In the old age, write down Security of services and personal needs, <clears throat> security of personality, services towards personality, retirements, benefits, and deployment of assets for benefits. <clears throat> now, within all these facets, you have to build a personality. You want to adapt my way? There is a my way. I'll call it my way. There are two ways in my way, insecurity and security. When I can produce, I give myself the minimum. When I know I will not be in a position to produce, I like to give myself the maximum. That's my way. You understand? No. Simple English. When I can produce, right? I can earn. I give myself minimum. But I, when, when I won't produce, I'll give myself maximum. But I want to live rich now by giving myself minimum, right? Earning maximum, giving minimum. How I can live rich? It's called corporate living. That's the American way of living. It's not that I brought it from India. I learned it here and I learned it in three years. 
because when i came as a yogi i saw these people living very rich and i wanted to know the secret i talked to them they all told me the one thing corporate living i said okay then i studied corporate living i established it i am rich what is the rich spend minimum and enjoy maximum <clears throat> but there's a one sacrifice to do there's nothing in my name titles are not in my name it doesn't satisfy my ego if you have to afford that that the price you pay and the other way is everything in my name if everything is earned in my name and i own it and i am the one who deals with it at wheels and deals normally you pay 61% this is how it goes <laughs> if everything you own the way you own it and you want to have the satisfaction i we go then when you own earn 100 dollars okay you pay 61 per if you are a resident of california you pay 61% income tax <clears throat> in united states one quarter of your earning you pay in taxes one quarter means 3 months right whatever you earn in 3 months total earning goes into taxes but if you earn more than $50000 you are in the bracket of 100000 50000 then this is how you go if you are a resident of california quote and quote you pay 61% income tax you bring home 39 dollar out of 100 got it 9 dollar book keeping and book accounts and accountant and all that what remains 30 10 dollars in uh, insurance life insurance work insurance car insurance health insurance what remains Ten dollars in employment, secretary, this, that. After those people have to be paid. What remains? Well, jump with it. Write down that. Jump with it. <clears throat> That's why you all are poor, and I am not. corporate way is the american way but lot of people feel their security is you know a man like me may not have any business i may just become consultant all great people in the old age become consultant You know what do they charge? Five hundred dollars an hour. They are all sitting in Washington, enjoying their life. They make two appointments or four appointments, one appointment as the case is. If they work three days a week, they make four, five appointments a day. That's it. You have retirement plan. you have personal plan you have this you have that you have 130 things to do it but you have to know all the problem with you all of you in america have found out that you don't economically plan your life you only plan your life emotionally
That's the problem with all of you. You all plan your life emotionally, socially, personally, socially, emotionally. You should plan your life economically, career-wise, and for your attitude-wise. Attitude, career, and economics. Oh, get all those stuff under the cover because this thing is just uh, calling attention upon the sky and get under the tent. There's somebody's, those stuff there. Pull it in. You understand? To you, money is for your social expansion. In my way, social life should bring me the money. Life should be planned economically. Because why? Quote unquote, Yogi Pajan saying, love doesn't pay bills. Love? All right, give me one break now. What is the biggest necessity of the life? <laughs> huh? Well, breath is all right. Without breath, you can't even think what is the necessity. Huh? Energy. Energy. Energy, right, right. Energy, pavan, pran, breath. Next to it. Water. Water. Water is very costly these days. <laughs> when you are poor, Gurbani says, Nirdan ko adar, koi na de. Mirtan, without wealth, man without wealth is respected nowhere. And Gurbani says, name of God is also wealth, highest wealth, for which you will be sacred and you will be paid. Yes, Sri Guru Granth is very good. Read it. Uh -huh. It tells you on business more than anything else. Tell me, tell me now. What else? Help. Who cares? <laughs> you die, all the worries are gone. Love. love. Go for a breakfast with a loved one. Come out fighting with tears. Fulfillment of destiny. Huh? Fulfillment of destiny, think of it and the fate takes you over, nobody cares. Courage. Huh? Courage. What? Courage. Courage, have it. Take a sword, kill everybody. <laughs> huh? Ah, be conscious and never move. Trust. Trust everybody, get pregnant. Laugh for a while, re weep rest of the life. Thank you. 
Huh? Yeah, purpose, be selfish, everybody kick you out. I'm not going to let you go anywhere. <laughs> Give me that one word. Be noble and we'll make statue of you. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, keep on talking and eat everybody's head. Are, there is one word only. Pay your bill. Next to living, the important thing is pay your If you don't pay your bill, you will drop from the yeah. hill. Oh. It's a very old saying. It's very old. It when in English they never knew what poetry is. When England was under the these guys, uh, they used to come from Norway. What they call them? Vikings. England was a Viking rest colony. They will come there, eat meat, hunt, and use their women and uh, drink, and that's it. So England is not that what you know of England. England has a very heavy population. They're called Tommies. They are not from any parents. They are bastard, all of them. And they are almost in the army of the British government. They are made, raised, it is old tradition. They are very ruthless people. Very angry, very ruthless, very good fighters. And they are called Tommies. They are all Tom boys and Tom girls and got, they are, they are, they are a very exclusive race, they keep them in barracks. <coughs> so in those days, even this used to be said, because in those days the Vikings will kill people from taking them to the hill and throwing them down in the canyon. <laughs> sea or canyon, whatever the under the, there were stones. So they used to say, pay your bill, otherwise get dropped from the so that means when the Vikings come, please them, help them, make them pay your bill, means pay your tribute, pay your whatever you have to do. Otherwise, you'll be taken to the top of the hill and dropped. It's a very old saying. So I mean, you understand? <laughs> pay your tributes to the economics of your life. You are very mischievous today. You? <laughs> now you are becoming romantic, right? In one second. Pink Koras in one minute. So today telephone will be jammed, everybody will be calling home. I understand that. Is it the weather or you? Whatever the case is. Or that yoga class did you? <laughs> So, pay your bill or get dropped from the? Yeah. It's the very old saying. <laughs> and it's very new today. <laughs> Nothing is free, even you have to pay for the freedom. There's no liberty, you have to labor for it. Why not organize it? <coughs> There's a very old English saying, make the hay. <laughs> so when you have a earning capacity, make your life reasonably comfortable. 
And when you cannot earn and there is an old age, you should be in a position to work. It is called corporated living. It is very incorporated. It's a very, very beautiful method of living. So Puruk is here, she can uh, share with you the ideas how to set up yourself. Life is a reality and life is imagination. Life is a When you take the reality and take the imagination as inspiration and take the reality to bring the imagination into reality, when you take the life from reality into imagination, you are destroying it. When you bring the imagination into reality, you are building it. That's all it takes. Who guides who? Lot of lives are ruined by bringing the reality into imagination. And then what? Then there's no place to go. Don't bring yourself down. Bring the imagination down and put it into reality. That's the way of successful living. Do you understand that? What? You know what these gamblers are? Imaginatives. They have such a heavy imagination that they want to be millionaire in one, they just want to pull one lever and whoa, I'm a millionaire. People with a lottery. But do you know in that whole game, 80% is against us? 80%. You know how they distribute it? Gambling? 80% against you, 80% for the house, 20%, 10% for wages, and 10% for... Uh, so nobody pays more than 10%. So why you want to ruin yourself? What is the lottery? Three million people put five dollars each. Huh? Comes to what? Fifteen million? They don't let you touch those fifteen million. Out of the interest of that fifteen million, out of the interest of the fifteen million, they give you a prize. And they give price to what? Plan your economics first and your life later. You, you're not going to like me from this week, I know. I mean, I, I fully understand. That's why first week I was very divine and charming. <laughs> but this week you are going to frown at me. Oh, what is talking about? I'm telling you what the truth is. Plan your, love your economics before you love your lover. Before you write his name in your telephone book, love his pocketbook. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you everything. <laughs> Any man with a fat pocketbook can be worked out. <laughs> and any... <laughs> Ever you wanted to hear all this from me? But what should I do? It's the truth. Any man 
with a fat pocket book can be worked out. Any man with a skinny pocket book is nothing but a pain in the neck. And you, out of your love, you end up with a man who makes you work and live off you. And a majority of you have that experience. I saw a man saying, Honey, you got to go to work today. And she said, No. Siri Singh Sahib, here, I'm not going to go to work. He said, What about our budget? He's going to stay three days here. Are you not going to go work three days? She said, I'm not going to go three days plus one day more. He said, What about the budget? You know, you are on hourly basis. She said, You know what? These three days you're going to work. <coughs> that guy has never worked all his life. He lives out this lady. Poor thing works. This woman does two jobs. He's out from the house 6 a.m. She changes somewhere, God knows where, and goes to another job, and she's back 11 o'clock, five days a week, from last eight years. Plus she maintains the house. And this guy sits and criticizes her. And he pretends to be very religious. Your turban is not right. Your churidar is not fit. You didn't do your nitname. <laughs> uh huh? Oh, yeah. He's so critically spiritual, you can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Last year, I, I blasted him so much, sent him to work. And you know what she said to me? Can you believe this woman? I love her very much anyway. I won't, that's why I'm not telling you the name. <coughs> she said, sir, don't be harsh with him. <laughs> I said, harsh? I said, you call me harsh? <laughs> I'll walk all over him. Do just leave me alone. <clears throat> so my dear girls, don't read the book, read the pocket book. <laughs> Am I all right? A little late, but all right. <coughs> Never read the book. Never read the book. Read the pocket book. And before you write a name of anybody in your book of addresses, also write down the balance in the bank of the person. <laughs> person who doesn't show you the bank balance, never trust it. <clears throat> you know, bigger test of the love? Ask the guy to show the income tax return of the last five years. <clears throat> And they learn from me the tricks. They work. You want to fall in love with somebody? Don't ask him any proof. Tell him to bring your five years last income tax report. I, I honestly, I do not understand how can you love a woman and not take care of her. I have never dreamt it. And I'm yet to me. I, I sit among men and I talk to them. They think I'm the fool. I, this is, was, why? Care is the last thing which exists in this country. Nobody cares for anybody. I love you. I kiss you. I hug you. Bacteria exchange and spermatoda exchange and that's going on. What about, you know, what, what about any, 
What about the buck? <laughs> Where is the money? See, the American saying, buck stops here. You know? Give me a dollar bill. Quick, somebody. See, I can make a money like this. All right, you want to see something very special? Give me a dollar bill. Uh, this is dirty. Oh, you can't. This is All right, ten dollars. Hey. This guy. Okay, give me a dollar bill. You want to all experiment something? Give me one dollar each who want to see this. Come on. <laughs> I have a career. You are very, very miser, all of you. One dollar, one dollar. No, no, just one dollar each. Nobody should pay more. One dollar. <laughs> and cameras should be ready. No, no, come on, come on, have fun. Well, we'll make some money, we'll give it to you. Oh, wow, that's good. Come on, come on, let's have fun. And those who have paid dollar, remember it, that you give it. <coughs> no cheating. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, then it's too late. One dollar, one dollar each. Only one, right? Okay, okay. One, one. And don't bring dirty dollars. That's not right. What's that, check? <laughs> okay. For one dollar, one. Hey, that's too much. Hurry up. Okay. Okay, okay. Very close call. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Bring me one. Uh, get the cameras, please. <laughs> Otherwise, it is going to be a bad show. <laughs> okay, much. Thank you. Not Canadian dollar. <laughs> That is much less. Hey. This is for five ladies, sir. That's okay. One dollar, one. One, one. Now hurry up, that's enough, come on. I just wanted to make a thick packet. <laughs> that was I thought. It was not be otherwise nice. Okay. Come on, sweetheart. Hurry up. And that's it? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's enough. Are you? Come on. Okay, that's enough. Now, let us make this whole thing worthwhile. Hey, doctor. Hey, you give me ten dollars? Come here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, we are even. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she got looted, huh? <laughs> oh my God. I never, <laughs> I never knew that's what all is about. Hey. <laughs> Let us work out this karma. It's a very funny picture you're going to have once in a lifetime. All right. <laughs> oh my God. We are getting emotional now. <laughs> hey, that's enough. Hey, come on, come on, quick. I don't want to say no to anybody, but just hurry up. Let's do the thing, otherwise it's too late. Okay, girls. Now listen to this. You are with me? Yes, sir. First, let us make the picture of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted, just a thick packet. That's what I did. It, it says, and if somebody loves you and wants to kiss you, 
Say, buck stops here. Just remember, before you offer the first gift of the case, find out how thick is the bundle of the dollars. <laughs> you follow? Otherwise, just say, Buck stops. Got the idea? <laughs> Will you always remember it? Never fault again. For every bacteria exchange, <laughs> wait, 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 I tell you something. <laughs> For every practical bacteria exchange, there must be a price to buy. What do they call that thing, which kills the bacteria? <laughs> Penicillin. It costs a lot of, you know, one, one, ten days thing cost how much money? Fifty dollars. Huh? Fifty dollars. So this is good for only two penicillin treatments. No big deal. God knows what is going to get what. <laughs> just, <laughs> just remember, just remember, this one line of mine, and write it down for yourself. <clears throat> I am too beautiful, too divine to be bought or to be sold. <clears throat> Planning life is the principal way of living. Planning life is the principal way of living and it is a primary need. Economic planning is a primary need. All right? Got the idea? Now, raise your hands who participated in this dollars? You all remember it? Okay. Now each one come and get your dollar back. Come, come, come. Let us see what your memory is. One. Quick, quick. I like to see whether you have good memory or not. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Huh? Dollars, then I'll tell you the second part of the game. You don't understand. Get your dollar back.
Come on, quick, quick, hurry up. Whatever digit comes is all yours. <laughs> huh? Okay. <laughs> I know. Come on, quick, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Good. Well, that's what I'm testing. <laughs> okay. Now, get me the nine more ten dollars change of this. Hurry up. Satkar Paul, give my nine dollars back. How many are these? Seven. Eight, nine. You took yours, right? Not yet? Okay. This is ten. What's that? No, no. That's not the purpose. Who else? Uh, come on, no, 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 wait a minute. No, this <laughs> and this. <laughs> All right, keep these dollars with you wherever you are and put it on your mouth. <laughs> and smell it. And behind this says, box stops. Yeah. All right. Bak bak in Gurumukhi means tasteless. <laughs> you know, bak means bak bak means foolish talking. Bak bak means also tastelessness. Something which has no taste, which is foolish, which is ridiculous, is called bak bak. <laughs> so bak stops. No bacteria exchange. And then leave, let it be free, eh? Don't play with it. Let it enjoy it. <laughs> you think this guy can't come to the class? Okay. Now you understand life? What? In God we trust? In God we trust and we love the cash. <laughs> so please understand, economics living is not a bad idea. Economic living is a good idea. But what is wrong in that life is where you are not honest in earning. First law of Sikh Naam eh? Naam Japo. Naam. Japo, taramdi kirt karo. Taramdi, earn through the righteousness. Want to go? Share. Share and enjoy. Hmm? You understand that? 
शेर एन नाम जपो वंड छको तरम दी नाम जपो तरम दी कीर्त करो वंड छको understand those three principle naam japo means meditate on god and second beautiful principle is taramdi kirt karo any money which will come to you after hustling and hassling and manipulating and all that will not bring you peace of mind it'll bring you lot of trouble it's not worth it those three principle are the most beautiful three fundamentals and the two more is which akal murt ho ke vasso sarbat da pala karo these are the five principles on which guru nanak taught you understand that akal murt ho ke vasso live as a swollen face and broken cheek how are you i understand you have a triple fracture yes i do oh you look good it is called god slapping the face now i understand they are going to make hole in your face yes they are very good what else they are going to do St stitch it up from inside or outside from outside very good that's nice by tomorrow tell the surgeon just he should take another x-ray by that time it you may be totally repaired you were terrible yesterday didn't you uh, today you are all right you are together huh yeah hard way to learn isn't it I have told you honey nothing will work out just be straight What about your leg those stitches are healed Now the second stitches are going to be healed You are going to be all right or you you are going to learn the third lesson Okay <laughs> She is good She takes the lesson very all right it all happens through the unseen hand of god never figure it out uh so what what we are talking about huh five principles of nanak नाम जपो धर्म दी कीर्त करो नाम जपो मेडिटेट ऑन नेम ऑफ गॉड वन प्रिंसिपल धर्म दी कीर्त करो अर्न राइचसली वंड छको शेयर एंड एंजॉय अकाल मूर्त होके वसो अकाल मूर्त इज लाइक गॉड बी द पिक्चर ऑफ गॉड live as a picture of and last sarbat da pala karo wish nahi do good to all wish <laughs> what a cheating wish good to all what does that mean nothing <laughs> wish don't wish no wish wish business <laughs> do it 
ਸਰਬੱਤ ਦਾ ਭਲਾ ਕਰੋ ਕਮਾਂਡਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਦਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਕਮਾਂਡਮੈਂਟ ਸਰਬੱਤ ਦਾ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਫਾਈਵ ਕਮਾਂਡਮੈਂਟਸ ਫਾਈਵ ਫਾਈਵ ਕਮਾਂਡਮੈਂਟਸ ਵਿਚ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੇਵ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਰਿਪੀਟ <laughs> wish good to all and do good to none <laughs> you are tonight so funny i can't believe it <laughs> what are you up to <laughs> wish love to all and make no love huh <laughs> that's not fair <laughs> do do good to all all right by tomorrow you have to write this little paper quick my personality profile and my ditches just just write one line don't bother you know what a ditch is no. huh no. do we have a dictionary here Yeah. Sir, how do you know you're being over ambitious? We'll discuss it later. First is this. First you have to do this homework for your own sake. You got to work hard with this weekend with me. I do not know how many years I can teach more. And I do not know how many years you can be with me. Time is running short. we got to complete what we came here for so let us work hard get going because out of you many will be giving birth to women female ladies children female children whatever and it is obligatory for you to know all this knowledge and teach them take out the word ditch what it says What is the question we wrote? <coughs> my method to stitch my ditch. <coughs> And tomorrow those papers will be handed over to Dr. Satkar Palkar. And answer it very seriously, write it very seriously. it will relieve to you it will reveal lot of facts about you to you the emotionalism is like bumps in life the depression is the ditch in life now i am explaining to you what this word actually mean and these bumps and ditches are responsible for unhealthy life of yours now sing himalaya <coughs> quick put the tape on let's do it now happy work i want everybody to participate though oh where are the performers on the stage
car in the world which cannot be fixed? <coughs> hmm? What you said to begin with? No, no. What did I hear first? <coughs> now, which one is the truth? Heart or the car trouble? What? Somebody has to investigate it. She's not here even today. Sir, I talked to her and she'll be here tomorrow morning at 7. A.M.? Yes. No, yes. she'll be here at 9 o'clock in the morning. She'll be here before the show class. Yes. And there'll be two more dances by Thursday. And uh, she does not have heart trouble. She has she only wants. car trouble. Only car trouble. <laughs> who, wants to be, who wants to be collateral on that? <laughs> you? Okay, I'll investigate. 
I like to introduce you to the someone who wrote this song, which you have just chanted and sang. Uh, it is in partnership uh, with us. Gurdarshan, would you come? Sit down here. Well, <clears throat> Gurdarshan wrote this song and gave it to me, right? Is that true? <clears throat> First three well, verses. Let us have a dialogue. <laughs> well, the song uh, originated from the words of Siri Singh Sahib's book, Last Solstice. And it was in the morning in Gurdwara, and he said, give me all your neuroses. I'm as strong as a mountain in the Himalayas, and I can take them. And that afternoon during Tantric, I had all my neuroses on my fingertips, and I said, OK, you can have this one, and that one, and that one, and that one. I took him at his word, and I was so impressed that a year later, I wanted to commemorate it. So I wrote the first three verses to the Himalaya song and gave them to him. And it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he came back an hour later with two more verses and told Sat Peter Singh and I to put them together in a song. And so Sat Peter and I collaborated on the last verse, and by 7 o'clock we had the tape for him, which is what you have now. And I'm very pleased. You all like it. So. Uh, this is what we, three of us joined together. Then Siri Hari joined together to give it a <coughs> very celestial touch. This what you are doing is not acting, it's not expression, it's not communication. <coughs> in, in spiritual language it is called chauri. You know we do this? What that represent? Read the word celestial. Dictionary. Doesn't exist. Body, stars, etc., of heaven, divine. That's it? That's it. Says that you said. Celestialness. Celestialness is called living. So we are we are actually communicating in a very <coughs> it is called celestial communicable technology, which we are going to Go ahead and do it. So, did your song find the right place? <laughs> it's definitely found its home. Thank you. So she came in uh, in time to be with us. And uh, how many of you work in the Oriental Beauty Secret? She is the executive secretary of the Oriental Beauty Secret. Do you know her? She is the one you can tolerate. <laughs> Because she wants you to waste less time on talking and more time in making money. She's a very technical person, absolutely intelligent, very well trained. But she cannot talk or deal emotionally with you. But if you want to be professional, to make the buck, she's the best bet. She'll be with us in the, this uh, two weeks with us, if you want to understand anything on Oriental Beauty Secret, ins and out of it, she's your best chance. But don't expect that she will, she does not know how to talk cateringly. As from Guranvat, you cannot take away its philosophy, you know. She has to be absolutely logical and philosopher 
doesn't matter what the matter is. Even in a humor, I have seen Guru Amrit Kaur Khalsa absolutely philosophical about a humor. I mean, that's the last thing in the world one can think of, but you can't help her. She is she's what she is. So if you ever want in your life what you call the exactness <clears throat> of business, if you ever want to be business-like, that's it. It is so surprising, <clears throat> I have to make a confession. All these macho men who I know, I love them, they are my sons, you know? And they are... <laughs> when they talk to her, on third minute they are like this. <laughs> and I said to somebody, I said, hey, I said, you had a meeting with Gurdarshan, what, what's the matter? She said, it just finished. <laughs> I said, what? He said, there was nothing to talk. She was already right there. Yes, 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 and no, 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 and... He said, sir, I want to learn how she talks. I said, she does the homework, that's it. It's a very business quality. It is called business-like, and it's very hard to develop. We basically develop our emotional communication and we also deal business emotionally. But if you really want to, all right, ask her a few questions. <laughs> Open house. Just I want to tell you how, how the business. Yes? I yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to know. Just, you mean that? Yeah, come on. I want to know how you handle this most of the adult men from powder puffing in your business. Do you know what I mean, powder puffing? No, could you explain that? It's like, oh, you're a sweet little girl at the school for your business. How nice of you, and you kind of push me aside. That's a big guy's view of what you do. How do you handle that? Well, it's different in every case, but if I find that kind of condensation or condescending, approach, you have to stop it immediately. In a very professional way. You just have to stand up and, and say, well, thank you very much, but I don't really see it that way. And uh, move quickly on to something more creative. She's very polite, though. This is how she moves. Can I tape, re, re, re sign you the tape of conversation? Hi, Gurdashnika, very sweet. It's very good. I want to talk to you really. On this process, I brought, since I've told me certain question, and he said he has discussed with you, and uh, you're very sweet, and I, I won't take much of your time. And she said, you have already taken a lot of time. What is the question? <laughs> <laughs> it's exact quote, unquote. There's not a word back and forth. And he said, oh. Um, you know what he said. She said, I already am very, uh, what is the question? I have seen that man sweating. Her eyes, she told him, what is the question? He couldn't know what to say. <laughs> you can't come out hatefully in business, and you cannot let down another person, but you can go to the job as fast as you could, and that take away the whole paranama to a different scale. You understand that? Even don't waste time when somebody gives you a lot of adjectives, say, thank you, what's the matter? Or you can say, come on, let's go to the deal. Because in business, time is money. And any one line said or any one second wasted is loss. So learn to cut down through every personal uh, manipulation and come to the business. All right, next question. There are so many hands. I saw them.
Oh, wait a minute, this is yeah, go ahead, Arya. Guru Amrit, you come also here. I have to have a philosopher come another. I want to make you understand the change between two answers of the same question. Go ahead, ask the question. Uh, I see that as a, a possessive and ultimately destructive approach. And since it's Siri Singh Sub's business created for us to share with other people, the training is part of that sharing. And the part of our philosophy of sharing would be to um, get somebody interested first and then pass them on and then come wow. back and check up on them. That's the way it is. Okay, now, in because our subject is communication, right? <laughs> okay, here we have two people, and you can choose one question, and they both will reply the same question. Then don't make it a business question, ask any life question. But that's a very long question. Let um, me reply to you. I think uh, Oriental <laughs> Beauty Secret is itself a business. It doesn't drop anything and pick up anything. Our basic idea is to get into a disc. Of that I will answer if you want to. <coughs> we want to now, now the purpose of this is to get to a question where two personality answer the same question. And I like from the floor a question to be asked. All right, I know who can ask the question, and she'll be right. You. Color turban. I forget your name. What is your name? Diane. Stand up. And you'll ask three questions to these two people. It doesn't matter what you ask. If we can, if we can have it so that it's repeated. Oh, she has that. Oh, okay, good. Cool. Right. So everyone can hear. Three questions. <laughs> Life. She was set the voice also, don't worry. <laughs> I have no questions. some questions. <laughs> So hard. <laughs> so hard.
think about your work situation and, and situations you'd have to deal with or that you may have a question about. Is there a, a way that you see to, to immediately put someone at ease when you, when you see that there's already a fight going between two people? Sort of a, you know what I mean? Push the thing. It's a pity Garamra didn't get to answer that first. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had you all smooth down. <laughs> That's what she was saying. It's her specialty. Um, probably to seek the common ground and find something they can agree on first or remind them of something they've come together about before so they can remember that they have something in common and can work from there instead of coming from two different directions. Uh, well, um, no, that's it. Okay, you. okay when I um, first come in a situation and there's conflict between two different people, um, I'll just tell you my internal process and then I can tell you how I deal with it. But you'd have to understand the internal process so you can understand. <laughs> First thing is that I, um, there's like a calculation that goes off on each side, emotional, verbal, uh, intellectual, uh, you know, spiritual level. Like they just, uh, just all that calculates for me real fast where this person is, where this person is, where this person needs to be talked to, and where this person needs to be talked to. And usually there's a gap between where one person's talking and the other person's talking. So you have to get them talking to each other at the, at the place where they need to hear it. So usually it's a lot of reframing to bring it to where they can start talking to each other. And it, um, any subject matter would be, you know, you could, could use, but that's usually just in process. How it happens. Does that explain it? I see. <laughs> It's basically what she said, but it was a lot of cushioning. <laughs> you know, she gets to it real fast, and I kind of like couch it a lot. <laughs> so. do, do you uh, personally ever feel like just retreating from that situation of being a mediator? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. Uh, it's yeah, is that the answer? Is okay. It? Not usually. <laughs> usually. Usually I have an appetite to create a harmonious <laughs> so I usually just want to get in and just, you know, take command of it and put it in its right place and everyone goes along fine, then I walk out. You know, usually. <laughs> Usually they're kind of like things you eat, you know, kind of challenges you, talent challenges you enjoy. <laughs> so. Do you st uh, still find um, in the stage of development you're at now that you are inhibited? In, in not inhibited. Um, yeah, inhibited. You're right. Inhibited by some people? Intimidated is the Intim probably more intimidated precise int word. Intimidated to me sounds more like they're attacking you in some way, and inhibited means it's almost like they're restricting you some other subtle level. So it's two different questions as I see them. Can I ask both? both? Well, if someone's trying <laughs> to Or inhibited me. or intimidated by someone. <laughs> if I'm inhibited by someone, um, I will usually retreat and stand back and look at it and find out why I'm inhibited and identify it and come back to it and work on it later. If I'm intimidated by someone, I deal with it immediately and 
Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. Personally, I find out why I'm being intimidated, and usually I can feel it right here. So I say, that's my trigger. I can feel it going right now. What's it mean? What did they say? What button did they push? And then I take a breath and try and stand back and, and relax about it. I don't take it personally. So if, intim if, if, what it, if I'm intimidated or Do, if I'm... Are you personally inhibited or intimidated by, by people? By, by somebody coming up and doing that to me? Yeah. Um, well, I suppose I recently <laughs> <laughs> went through something, but, but not normally. <laughs> so I had to kind of check. No, normally, I think because... Um, I, I kind of go, if somebody is in some way in trying to intimidate me, I think I have a couple things. One, my height, and two is I become very <laughs> conscious and very neutral that they must be missing something to start thinking that about me, you know what I mean? So that's usually my normal first reaction. <laughs> so it's not easy to much intimidate me. And then and in terms of inhibit me, I usually feel that uh, wherever I am, God is, and he's the doer, and he's doing everything, so um, who can stop that, you know? So, so I don't usually feel inhibited either. Though I did come close to feeling <laughs> death, but that was God's grace, and that was the sacredness. That was quite an experience, too. So, it's... Now ask your question to me, and I'll answer. Start with the first. I um, was confused when I first spoke to you. No, um, no, no, no. Start okay. the same the, question the qu again. What? The same question? Oh, mm -hmm. where was I? Okay. Remind me. <laughs> oh, that, that last question? No, no. All questions. Okay. Two people are fighting, remember? <laughs> <coughs> Wasn't that the third question? The, the first question was? If two, oh, okay, if two people are fighting, um, how, do you, how do you put them at, put, well, put one at ease at least, if not both of them? If two people are what? Are, are in conflict, fighting. If there are two people in conflict, just understand conflict comes from ignorance. Find out their ignorance and put it before them, conflict will stop. You can never stop the conflict of two people. The root of the conflict is the ignorance between them. So just pull the pull intelligently their point of ignorance, put it before them, conflict will stop. You don't have to do a thing. Do you uh, personally feel like retreating from being a mediator <laughs> sometimes? Uh, I don't, I have not yet learned in my life how to retreat. <laughs> it doesn't matter from anything. I, I, my life, the process of life is to go home. And once you come out of the womb, you cannot get back to the womb. Therefore, there's no way it is not, it's not logical, psychological, personally, reasonably possible to retreat from anything. Rather, you must meet everything halfway. If you fight at the enemy's ground, the dead bodies will be their responsibility, not yours. You understand? You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
that much I can retreat. I don't think retreating is in my genes. Retreating is only purposeful to me to attack. Because those who do not know how to retreat never plan a good attack. So plan retreat first, attack later. That's the key to success. In every game of war, when you plan an attack, you plan a retreat also, in case the enemy is overestimatedly heavy or casualty is heavy, what are you going to do? So to me, retreat is only re-strengthening, regrouping yourself in the most defeatist attitude. What you mean by retreat is withdrawing, for me is re-strengthening myself. So interpretation is different. When I retreat, I shall attack. There's no way out. As lull is the forewarn of the storm, retreat is the forewarn of the attack. And you know in my behavior, I go silent sometimes what it causes. Forget it. That's where I plan when to hit the hardest. <coughs> Go ahead. Oh, are, do you feel uh, inhibited or intimidated by some people. <clears throat> when somebody tried to inhibit me, uh, intimidate me, or whatever you call me, <laughs> when somebody tries to do it, I would like to eliminate that person from the planet of communication, <laughs> because that person, to my knowledge, is a living nuisance. You, you understand? Yes, sir. That gives me a work, you know. To me, to communicate aggressively even is the biggest offense. Forget about drama, trauma, rudeness, or selfishness. I'm not working on that. I'm just telling you, when a person tries to do that, that person, I, I brand that person as a living nuisance. So then I start working on this person very effectively to see that that Nuisance is eliminated, not the person. You understand that? Yes, sir. Because if if there is a comp if there is a room which can hold fifteen people, okay, and there is one person who start passing gas, what will be the fate of the fifteen people? <laughs> and that is exactly the representation of the person who try to eliminate or prohibit other person. It means that individual is passing a dirty, stinking gas. That's how I look at it. I mean, I have to tell you how I look at it. And if I do not give that person something to, some heavy laxative, I'll not be satisfied. <laughs> I'm telling you the grass root how I work. There is a <clears throat> one offense in the heavens. And that is, there are two offenses in the world for which you will face the karma. One is when you talk rudely to a person who you have to have a reverence, and secondly, you disobey a person for who you have to have a reverence. So sometimes you hit the leg, the person doesn't agree, then you hit the cheeks. If that person doesn't agree, then you hit the head. You know what I mean? But somewhere along the line, person has to learn to obey. Manne ki gat kahi na jai. One who obeys, that person can only command. It's a, it's a way of education. Obedience is the way of education. You must obey to learn.
you go to school, you learn. What did you learn there? To obey. Master says, A, you do not know what A is. He says, A, you say, A. Then you want to know to apply the A with something, then say, A, apple. Then you say, it is the apple which is spelled with A. So you associate A with A plus with a subject and object called apple. And that's how you learn alphabet, by obeying, to associate, to know, to acknowledge, and to associate. Man is a social animal. He has to associate with something, something. Everything is associated with everything. So that's how we learn. And one thing we have to learn, not to disobey our own sacredness. When you disobey your own sacredness, you bring on you the calamity, misfortune, and everything. And in this country, what I have found is, Nobody is going to suffer. Nobody can suffer. Everybody is happy. But we flout our sacredness to the extent we bring all the tragedy on us. <clears throat> is that clear? You must learn the way of... You all must, should have the copy of my PhD degree, which I did in my PhD in Psychology of Communication, that book, that you all must have. It was printed, wasn't it? Yes. You must read it. Poke, provoke, confront, elevate. You must learn that. That's the only way to success. Because that's the only way you can succeed. All right, there was a question from the girls. Who can speak that question? What, what you will do when your husband if dies? Your husband dies. Answer. <coughs> I would, um, I would honor his name, and I would uh, rebuild myself emotionally and make sure um, my economic situation was straight. Mm -hmm and then I would seek to replace him. <laughs> huh? I don't know, the question is to you. I am the third man to answer the question. I don't know how to relate to an idea of a husband, let's see. Let's see. If a husband died. I know, but I'm just. Um, well, I suppose first, I would, even this, it's going to be very logical <laughs> explanation here. Um, feel I'm very philosophical. First, first of all, my identity is first and primary to me. So, um, my consciousness of my identity and my um, field of influence as myself is both separate and apart. If you're married, a part of the marriage. So, if and, and of course, that identity first comes when, in terms of your relationship to your soul and your higher self. So, should a husband die? <laughs> it would seem to me that it was God's gift and privilege, though at that time it was very painful. But everything that God would bring to me, I know, is always a gift, and therefore it would provide me the opportunity to grow more deeply in myself, because that would be my pursuit from, from even working in a relationship of marriage with someone. Okay. No, this is my answer. <laughs> in case my husband died. <laughs> I was married in the will of God through the presence of the Guru, and the God and Guru has taken away the body, the memory, the love, the association, and the togetherness shall live forever. I recognize no death because only I recognize life. Death is a temporary illusion. If somebody has gone a little ahead of me, I'll walk a little later. 
unto the same place of dignity, grace, and infinity. My husband is God to begin with. It was in the beginning, it was in the end, and in the process, if I lost my mate, it is the will of God which I'll mm -hmm. accept gracefully and as a part of life. You must understand, between me and BBG, there's only one topic these were discuss: who has to die first? <laughs> and she said, let her die first, and I should die later. I said, let me go first, and you die later, and we sometimes discuss it for hours. If you want to <laughs> tape record that conversation, you will be f fascinating how we discuss the entire philosophy of life. It's, it's, it's very romantic. I have never seen, uh, I, mean, I was very youthful once, don't misunderstand, I was not a kid, just a little boy, but in my own youth I had a lot of romance and used to draw a lot of girls. <laughs> now, I, now I draw a lot of girls to just to give you the ladies course and all that jazz, but I tell you, when I used to wear my uniform as a football fullback and used to go in the ground, <laughs> uh -huh. There was hardly a cheer left in the entire stadium. <laughs> and uh, I used, <laughs> I tell you something, it was a common household talk. Today is the footwork match, nobody's sister will be home. You can find them in the same, that's true. It's not uh, that at that time there was, there was a different uh, attraction going on. Amash, you can kick a ball and made, made him spin in the air for about two minutes. Can you believe that? Have you seen a thing like that? So it was quite a hero worship at that time, but it was a different hero worship, not like this. But uh, basically, life has to be understood in the aspect that it is. Once I came back home and took off my uniform, I would lie down, I said, Mom, I'm hungry. She said, yeah, yeah, your friend has come, you both have to eat together. I can't give you, you're not him. I said, okay. So I lied down and I slept. So he came and he said, Mom, I'm hungry. He said, well, he's sleeping, when he gets up, then you get it. <laughs> you have to eat together. I said, okay. So he lied down, he slept too. So later on we both got up and I said, hey, are you hungry? He said, terrible. Why you slept? I said, why you slept? So while accusing each other, we sat down and we ate the food and we were sitting there. And my mother came to me and she said, I'm sick and tired of you two bachelors. How long you think as a mother I'm going to cook for you? I said, well, what do you want? He said, well, I want to find some girl and marry you away, both of you. So I have a daughter-in-law and work it out. I said, okay, I'll tell you something. Why don't you go to my college tomorrow and find any girl, if you seem she's worth to be my wife, find it out. So we came, next day I came to college, I spread the word, my mother is coming to select a wife for me. <laughs> <laughs> my mother had the best entertainment, 700 girls running around her, solid vote. And she came back home and I said, Mom, what you found? He said, you can't have 700 wives, it's impossible, I can't decide. I give my hands up, I'll cook for you the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm not going to break anybody's heart. So we had, I had some good days to remember, so don't worry. <laughs> and good memories are good memories and they cannot be substituted. Rather, good memories are so good, bad memories <laughs> fall before them as very little. In case my husband dies, I will always feel the will of God. All things, all things. Okay, next question, please. Yeah. Yeah, you. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would probably say 16. <clears throat> um, 
I don't really look at it like a <laughs> <laughs> like an age, uh, and even in the process. I mean, it, each each person develops differently, and their needs are different. And in the overall way that that we're kind of working, you know, dating. Um, is out of date. Yeah, it's <laughs> a good way to put it. Uh, it, the, the, you know, one thing that I really liked about um, being in Bana, you know, when I, I was, you know, in college, and when you go to college, then you just kind of have this, um, or let's put it this way, <laughs> even if you don't have this energy, there's a lot of energy around you, and um, that when I put on Bana, it kind of took it all out of that so that the relationship became, in a sense, a more sacred relationship with whomever it was. It didn't, it wasn't based on what you can get or can't get or, so dating has not uh, got a good, you know, hasn't got a good, um, co you know, concept in my mind. So I wouldn't suggest it for any of you. <laughs> because I think that you could actually be, have a more protected end and develop, you know, as even we talked about today in class, like the concept of developing yourself and your career and your economic self and like all of that is all what's important to be in shape and at that time when you're ready and the time is ready the right person is there and it's ready and it comes together and it's all very graceful and it isn't something where you have to seek a social interaction or learning or anything and that that when you do take a spouse you know as you as you develop as young ladies that you would be in a position to to um, Serve, serve it with a, a pure consciousness because it, you, you don't play any games and even the tragedy in life with dating I think more than anything is that when you start a relationship I don't know how you'd end it you, you know what I mean <laughs> because any relationship anyway that I've started you either end in pain or you continue as a commitment for life so you know if you start a dating game it's automatically a game in, in my mind like right away you have in your mind that you start this to gain something and to drop it at some point. And so my training of myself or my goal of myself was never to start something to drop somebody or drop something. So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest any age. <laughs> okay. So what is the question now? <laughs> what age you should start dating? You should start dating at the age when you can totally chew the pit in the date and not damage your teeth. <laughs> oh, I, ha I think after you get married. <laughs> there, I found a date. <laughs> you know, every date has a pit. You understand? And when you are strong enough to keep the date, and take the pit out and chew it, and your teeth are strong enough that they are not damaged at all, date is yours. <laughs> but if you're going to eat the date with the pit, you're going to come home and it's going to cost a lot of medical bills and the <laughs> dental surgery and everything else. Right now, we are going through one pit business, which is quite the bottom of the pit. So, I mean, be very clear that Age doesn't mean anything, strength does. Do date, do date, but um, just take the pit to itself. It should not even feel in the mouth. That's, that's what a woman should be. All right, next. Oh, you didn't answer it? You yes, answered it. I just wanted to I just wanted to add that uh, the dating uh, syndrome or game answers a need to get to know the other gender if you haven't gone to co-educational schools before and that it should be uh, an educational experience that's supervised at almost any age before marriage. And that's a Sikh Dharma um, almost antidote or conclusion uh, to the situation we've all found ourselves in up until this lifestyle. I think the best way if you, you're very itchy to date 
send your mother first on the date <laughs> to check it out, the intelligence report. <clears throat> uh, the best thing is to send your mom and your papa with the family to date first. When they come back, wait a week and send your mother and father with the boy first to date. If they get a good report, then send one of your prettiest girlfriend on that date. If she comes and give report, then invite the gentleman to your home. If five, six, seven such tests one can go through, then say hello, it's worth. <laughs> A, age, B, beauty, C, caste, D, dowry, education, F, father, all that alphabetical makeup is, it, we call it dating, sin, dating phenomena. And test it all out before you expose yourself. First bacteria <coughs> may end up quite a story, so be careful. Next. Yeah, no, you have a question. What is what? Should, should, fear, should fear of a parent play, have any place or play any role in the raising of, of our children, your children, creating a fear in them of you as a parent? I'll pass on that one. <laughs> she passed. Um, I, I suppose it, it would. Um, depends how you do it a lot and where and for what, for what reason. Because um, there's different motivators. There's love and there's fear, and, and, and um, they're part of life, and the mother is a part of teaching them life. So you do fit into that, even, even always because you're always bigger, always wiser, always you know, the one they have to obey. I mean, it's an automatic process, it would seem, in any development. But that it should be a predominant quality, I don't think so, or that it should be an un unjustly used, I don't think. I mean, it should do, be done with love and education because that mystery, will, I think, will, would be there until they kind of grow and are older and transcend those and understand the personality of the mother that raised them. But uh, how many of you have driven car? Raise your hands. Okay. Okay, now if you are driving the car and you see the siren sound of the ambulance, what you do? Over. And stop, right? And then when the siren passes away, then what you do? Over. That's all is the parent's situation. When the parents raise the hell and a fear and whatever, pull over <laughs> and let it pass and keep the journey going. <laughs> you agree with me or not is your problem. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. The concern of parents, how negative it is, it cannot be more than that siren uh, hospital ambulance. That's how I see it. And they normally present that way. You know what I mean, see? La la loo, hoo, hoo, hoo. You are in a cult. You are not doing the right thing. You do not know. We are normal parents. We don't understand. Somebody is taking away my love from you. Bye, bye, bye. You know. That's how it sounds, right? It always sounds like that. Ooh, 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 like that. Pull aside and see what's going on. If something is coming on you, that ambulance is hitting you, tearing you apart, that you need an ambulance, then just work it out. If not, pull on the side, let it go and uh, start your day again. Uh, in one of these girls, she always, when her mother laid a heavy number on her, she does it uh, once a month. She gets on the phone and, phew, you can't believe it. You are this, you are going to be this. You she predicts her future as she's writing it. So. And later on, in the end of the conversation, the girl, uh, the daughter says, Mom, did you have a bad night with Papa? She says, No, how do you know about it? She says, oh, Okay. 
And did you have indigestion about food? She said, no, 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 not at all. And she said, I know you don't drink, but what wrong you have done to yourself that you are so curiously negative? She said, that damn yogi and his philosophy, God! How dare you tell me I am wrong? And she said, Mom, please talk to me. And she said, yeah, I have a miserable afternoon. You know, the, my neighbors came and they told me and they told me our furniture is no good and it's so miserable. I sometimes like to talk to you. I wish you should be home. She said, well, I'm not ready to be eaten yet. Yeah. And they become friends and then she calls about talks. They talk about 45 minutes to one hour. But first attack is so sweet. Sometimes you are used as an outlet. What they call it? Uh, you play a board, you um, bouncing board. And mostly mothers use their daughter as a bouncing board. And that is where you mess up yourself. Just understand it's a bouncing game. It's not serious as you think. So instead of she hits at the board and you hit back and it becomes a fight, just divert it. Uh, Sat Simran is very good in that communication. Sometimes you should ask her the question. It's an art. You all have to learn in life. Uh, say like uh, anything. And that's just ask a question. Oh, by the way, first mom, tell me what's the date today? What is the date? I'm as a date, calendar date. No, she will be totally diverted. Don't discuss weather with your mothers. You are asking for trouble. Ask about date, ask what uh, show she has seen, ask what shopping she has done. There are a lot of ways to dilute their fighting energy. I think you should all figure it out one way to divert my mother and you are about 100, 200, you will find 200 ways. Each one will come with a unique. Because you must understand, first attack which as a mother she does to a daughter is cannon fire and one, two, three, fire! That's how it comes. And you know, oh, there's no need of that. Let it come. Just, just give six inches, it will be over. Just give three seconds. Hey, what? Uh, mm, 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 uh, Rosie, God, what is that? That nonsense, uh, whatever. That spiritual. Uh, sorry, I don't know. I don't want to offend you. What is your name? <laughs> this is how they come on the phone first. It is totally intentional. It is well planned, and it is just to insult you. <clears throat> it has nothing else to it. It is totally taking you, you are nobody, you are a just piece of meat, you are brainwashed idiot. It's the biggest abuse a mother can give you, not to call you by the name you wanted to be called. Doesn't matter what your name is, I'm not discussing the name. And she said, yeah, uh, you say, mother, oh, you forgot? You know, you should start eating few almonds and certain other things which you strong, make your memory very strong, you know? And my spiritual name is, uh, Amart Kaur. Can you mothers repeat after me? Amart Kaur. Please, ma'am. Amart Kaur. Uh, she will be in so much anger and diffusion. Either she will hang up the phone and you will be off the hook, or she will start repeating it. If she start repeating it, you have held her by tail, then swing her anywhere you want. And if she, if she hung up the phone on you, be ready for the next day apologetic telephone, I'm sorry, you know, my dear daughter. You just, it's a very common sense situation. You have to deal it with a very great common sense and humor. You can't take it seriously. Uh, just like that, sometimes they say, normally they, they attack me sometimes. 
parents very directly. How come they just do what you tell them to do and they never listen to me? I am the father. What, what have you got? I say, I got nothing, you got everything. But what I got? I say, anger. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't have. <laughs> they don't. It's very funny. Dealing with parents is such an experience of mine, you can't believe it. Next uh, summer, I'm going to ask all my staff members to invite their mothers just in one week <laughs> and call it a Mother's Week so they can have fun. If they don't come, fine. If they come, they should have the privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. All Mothers, it's called All Mothers Week. <clears throat> Send a written invitation to them. Be my guest. After that, I think my staff will behave for the whole year, nice and calm and quiet. I'll have no trouble whatsoever. So, I mean, that will be an advantage in a way. Any other question? One question we take from the floor and that's it. Come on. Yeah. It is called common mistake. <laughs> Figure out a way to help him get rich and... Let him get not get him, fat. Let him yeah. make first the pocketbook fat. <laughs> make him think that he's doing it all and t taking all the credit, but stand behind him and make sure it happens. Good. I, the Sirsing Sab said today that you take your, your uh, ideals and you make them real. What is it? Imagination. Imagination. And you make it practical or real. So I feel that the, when, the, when, when, there's, when you're married, you're, you have just as much command of the spirit and of the projection of where the marriage is as he does, and if you, through your prayer and your imagination, <laughs> can mold the situation to be what you want, you'll have what you want. How many of you think you are poor? Raise your hands. Let me give you a very positive solution. <clears throat> Come on, don't, don't feel shy. If I'm very poor, let me raise my hand. I don't care. <clears throat> Gurjeet, why you want to be wet? That way you will not lose weight. Can you just sit there and stay up here? Can you stay up here? Can you stay up here? Can you stay up here? Yes, stay up here. Let us hear. Come on, let us all sing with heart and head. Bring your troubles to me, child of God. I will hold you in my arms forever. The longing of your soul has finally brought you to my feet. Saints and angels are beckoning to thee. Strong and holy as those mountains that you see. We can climb the steps to God, just give your heart to me. There's no reason to fear, child of God. Past is past, and now it's time to leave it. Though you may be worried that someday we'll have to part. Eternal love is dwelling in our hearts. In a those mountains that 
that you see. We can climb the steps to God. Just put your faith in me. Soon we'll be united, child of God. Worldly woes and cares are gone forever. Stars and moons will light our way throughout eternity. Grace of God will guide us through our path of destiny. Himalaya, Himalaya, I'm as strong and holy as those mountains that you see. We can climb the steps to God, those steps will set you free. Guru Gobind Singh sat in their midst, Hemkant was his place. He made the Khalsa from nothing but the mist. Brought to the world the purest rays. Himalaya, Himalaya, I'm strong and holy as those mountains that you see. We can climb those steps to God, just give your heart to me. All white covered heads, range after range, bring you the delight of strength. So you can walk as sons and daughters in this land. Walking tall like the saints. Himalaya, Himalaya, I'm strong and holy as those mountains that you Find the steps to God. I'm waiting there for thee. In that place of solitude and inner space, the Rishi's mind found perfection. The Lord came down to tell him face to face to take a human incarnation to lead mankind to their highest state of mind that in those lofty peaks God consciousness they mountains that you see. We can climb the steps to God. Those steps will set you free. We can climb the steps to God. I'm waiting there for thee. We can climb the steps to God. Just give your heart to me.
and the promises. Where are the monitors? They should immediately come on the stage when we start like that. Then it becomes difficult. Hurry up! in your life I don't want to do cause when I do it there is stress in my life too trust if you can that all I want from your life is to share the trust tribulations the joys the good a part of you I just want to be living a life healthy happy holy Guru Guru Ram Das is a personal saint Your life to be free 
So the bottom line is faith in all that there is Because Because I love you Promises are hard to make Without the grace of God there's always the fear that they will break But prayer is the hope for a soul such as mine And my prayer is to be in your life a light that will shine Guru Guru Ram Das is a personal saint of mine Guru Guru Ram Das is a personal saint of mine Saint of mine, Guru, Guru Ramdas is a personal saint of mine. Do you know who wrote this song? Yes, she wrote it uh, when one day she had, she just bugged me and I said, that's it, you, you can't do it. So she wrote this a kind of a apologetic letter, you can call it. And I kept it in my purse as a reminder that if she does it again, I'm going to pull it out and <laughs> tell her, look, this is what you wrote. <clears throat> and it was in her hand. So about two years later, I was looking into my purse and I found those, those two papers totally twisted and tortured in this one side. I said, what is it? Maybe some bill or some receipt or something. I pulled it out and read it. And uh, that very day, she said, well, she never is in trouble for the parking place because she said Guru Ramdas is a personal state, she, personal saint, she gets the parking place whenever. And that day, we went to lunch and I said, look, baby, let us see how Guru Ram does provide you a parking space today. It was impossible. There was no man in that parking lot, so nobody is going to pull, nobody is going to do anything. So she said, no, I'll get a parking space, don't worry. I'll be provided. I said, but I don't see today there is a chance. So she started driving slowly and just as I was just going to tell her, well, you know, what? The back light switched up red. <laughs> and this guy kind of dozy, sitting on his seat, woke up and switched the car and pulled it back. And he pulled back and she pulled in and said, see? <laughs> I said, well. So I thought if that personal saint can provide her a parking space, it can give us a space in life too. You know what I mean? So I called Sat Peter and I said, I like to have this put to music. After he put to music, I liked it so much. <clears throat> so I thought, it's a very personal song. It has it's a lot of meaning if you, if you take it to your personal self. Uh, these songs, All For You and <clears throat> this uh, Himalaya, and these are the songs written by those who had a joyful feeling of the sixth chakra. Songs, these three songs which I always uh, uh, make you to play, it's not, it's not the person important, but it's the experience of that person, <coughs> how they can combine third, fourth, and sixth together. So these three songs have that faculty in it. That's why 
I'm trying to explain to you. I'm not saying that these are wonderful songs or they are no good or they are great. I'm not discussing the philosophy of it or the words of it or the meaning of it. But I'm just explaining to you, there comes a moment in somebody's life when the third, the fourth and the sixth get together to come out from the fifth outlet. Eh? Throat is the outlet. So when the sixth governs it, fourth pushes it, and third starts it, there you come out with a song which is very personal, very meaningful, very deep. And well, it is a tragedy, some of these people are not even with us. And some people we are praying for and all that stuff. And another thing, uh, sometimes people who have left, we, I ask you to pray and you put up a question, why? So that you can clean your own malice, your own prejudice, your own dirt, your own shallowness, your own whatever, I, what, what we can say? Your own nonsense. When you pray somebody who has fallen, you fall in the line of Paikanaya, the first red cross of the universe. That's why praying for somebody who needs the prayer is the most auspicious, beautiful, wonderful, powerful act. Forgiveness is very divine and compassion is absolute God. If you really want to listen to my words, I know my personal life is in a misery and that is the way it will be. I must say, don't bother about me, I enjoy it. But uh, most of the time many people ask me questions, oh, she's a real this and she is a real this and you are asking us to pray for it. I say, yeah. I'm not worrying, working about, worry, worried about she, I'm worried about you who wants to define prayer. That's the most ugliest thing in the world. Pray for everybody, anybody, and must you pray which needs the most. Prayer is not an art of judgment. Prayer is, a, prayer is just, just a gift. There's nothing a human can give to another human but a prayer. And actually, where God is falling, and testing your compassion, and you cannot come out with prayer, you are just sick. Mostly I don't get ch chance to express myself, but to people who just do this to me, I just hate them from the very bottom of my heart. I can't believe these are even human. To me, a earthworm is much superior than these people. And I see it, but I don't want to say it because I don't get a chance to say it. It's not my job. But to me, it is the most ugliest thing in the world, not to pray for somebody who has fallen apart. God prays for these people. God is a drama. You know, God, you understand God. God is just a drama. It falls. And let's see how many people leap for that fall to lift it up. By lifting the fall, you uplift yourself forever. It's a wonderful reward. It's like a lottery, taking away the money of about three million people. So just learn one thing. <clears throat> what is the difference between a person and a godly person? That person is a person, he, he or she thinks in his yes and no, but a godly person sees nothing but God in everything and prays that God may come through and uplift. I do not know. I, I have never, I have never found comfortable with you. All of you are just in one way or the other has some hesitancy about praying for people who have left the path or people who are <coughs> fall apart or people who are negative or, you know. Uh, I think uh, the best thing in the world is that if you have a spirit and you want to share and you have a strength and you want to share and you have positive, you want to share, 
uh, you can elevate and you can share, I think you are beautiful. I think that's the only most beautiful thing in the world which I believe is worthwhile. It is my opinion. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to force you to follow this. But I am not going to force myself to follow you. So that's the way the line is drawn forever. I can't believe that hiring and firing is the way of life. I can believe vengeance is any way satisfactory. I don't believe putting down somebody makes any good at all. You know what I'm talking about? Rather, I tell you my game. If some people talk ill of anybody, I start appreciating that person. Well, I have offended a lot of people because of that. Because this is how I feel. I feel you are, if there is any strength in you and you cannot want to go with the person who doesn't have a strength, you are not a Sikh. That's how I believe. I don't believe the way you believe. I don't believe in holier than do. To me, holier than do is, thou is that anybody who's ugly, who's falling apart, who's nonsense, hug them, love them, kick them up, push them up, make them stand on their feet, get them going. You understand what I'm saying? Amas, you know me all, and I know you all. That's, that's a separate question, but there is one thing of me you don't know at all. And you're never going to know it until you experience it. I am a very strong person, agreed, and I do challenge everything, agreed, and I, I'm a good fighter too. That's my dharma. I'm a kshatriya. It is in my gene, and I fight really fair and well. It's, it's my way of life. Khatri ka putu bhaman ka nai, Guru Gobind Singh's words are right there. To fight and protect is my dharma, it's my duty. But to put down somebody and fight with a weak person and let down somebody and be negative against somebody and I, I, you, you don't understand. The problem with me is very simple. There is a soul in everybody and I cannot insult the soul of another person because I love my soul. And you do not understand this relationship between you and me. And all I'm victim of, all this slander about me and all this nonsense, is to capture me. You can't capture me because there's no me. It was never, is not, and shall not be. I have fallen in love with my soul. I have gone. I can't love you. I don't know what kind of love, love you talk. You're just all crazy to me. And a bunch of crackers just ka 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 I hear it all the time. La 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 It's like, like vulturing a person. It's not love. I love my soul, you love my soul, let's talk at that point of light, we'll be forever. And it doesn't matter how much the time and the circumstances and all these character assassination, all these allegations, all these bombshells, it doesn't mean a thing. I'm not going to get into all that. My job is let the whole world fall and let my prayer shine. It's an it's a elementary desire. I remember one day in my life, which I'll never forget, when I wanted to talk to somebody and everybody refused. And I was told on my face, you have one subject to talk, we are sick of it. And then I called Narinyan. I said, Narinyan, come in. She said, yeah, I'm coming in. He said, how are you, sir? You feel about that? I said, nobody wants to talk to me today. Why you have started the subject? She said, you know, I love you. I don't love what, what is right and what is wrong. And I said, Narinyan, what are you saying? And she said, don't forget, sir, my name is Narinyan. And I, I, 
learn the meaning of Naranjan that day. So I'm the one who gave her the name. I call her Naranjan all day. And it was a situation which I wanted to discuss and I called my four most beloved people whom I thought they are strong, they are steel, they are beautiful, they are in love with me. And all four, in one way or the other, told me, we are not willing to talk to you on the subject. Me, the master, the teacher, the Siri Singh Sahib of the Dharma, the Pope of the Western Hemisphere, <laughs> six foot two is tall man, whatever you want to call it, put every adjective to me, oh, they are all real. I confronted a day in my life when four most beloved people of mine flatly told me they're not willing to talk on a subject. And they came while coming in that little hallway saying, if you have called me for that subject, I'm not ready, it's too much. And I said, here you go. Look at these people, the cantaloupes on shoulders. So don't, don't, don't misunderstand. I enjoy to take you through the experience of treachery. I know it. It doesn't bother me. It exists. Loyalty and treachery, they work hand in hand. Who can do what? It's impossible to even believe. Love and hatred are the same coin. You don't have to worry about it. Everything has a polarity. But compassion has a power. Just remember this. Every word in the word has a definitely polarity. But the compassion has the power. Before it, everything falls apart. It sweeps over everything. I remember those lonely days when I and Nanyan would sit opposite to each other and look at each other and smile, would not say a word. She's alive, she's not dead. Because I will not like to talk and she will not like to hear. But we'll communicate with each other just through the eyes. Celestial communication is the, uh, is the greatest strength in life. That's what I'm trying to make you understand and you should learn. Prayer is a celestial communication. You know what the power of the prayer is? That Almighty God, the whole damn thing can be totally capsulized in a, in a baby. Can you believe that? Do you have any recollection and understanding of the prayer? It's the biggest, biggest tool we have. It's the highest tool we have. Why not we pray? Why not our prayer will work? Isn't in this song she says, Guru Ramdas is my personal saint? And what that prayer word is? My prayer will. Can you believe? That's her words. And, you know, you don't have to misunderstand me why I say that all these people are going to return. These are the words of Guru Gobind Singh. Khwar hoye sab milenge, bache saran jo hoye. What is different is unfortunately Kartapur has fallen or so and so has fallen and so and so has fallen. This is already predicted. It's not something I made it up. What is that Dora we saying? Huh? Raj karega khalsa, aki rehe na koi. Aki means rebellious. Aki means who doesn't obey any ethics. Raj karega khalsa, the pure one shall rule, there shall be nobody who will be aki. Khwar hoye sab milenge. Khwar, you understand? 
you go on a journey, there's no water, you got, it is all treacherous, it's all nonsense, it's all un discomfortable, everything. Go through the rot of it, it's called khwarona. Khwar hoye sab milenge. After getting to the rot of it, everybody will unite. Bache saran sohe, save shall be those who shall take the protection of God, of the purity of their sacredness. When Guru says it and we sing it every day and we repeat it, it without this our praise doesn't fish. And then my eyes ask you, please concentrate, please pray for so and so. Why not? We stand before the Guru, we fold hand, we pray. On our 120th day, bless it. On the birthday, please bless it. We can't bless person who has unfortunately was one of us and today if something gone wrong, and we can't ask God and Guru to correct it. He may not do it. Let him go to hell. Who cares? I mean, it's his problem. Why don't you fix God in everything? Let him fail. Why don't you have that kind of relationship, very, very personal, and just fight with him, yell and scream and say things which you don't want to say? You know, what's wrong with that? To get personal with God, what is wrong with that? All right, put that all for you. She's so ready. My God. They need a clap. The only education that I want is to learn to serve you better. The only work that I seek is that Kartapur committed in this song is when said, I can prove to Mukande, I can prove to the God of liberation. It's a very heavy claim. And she has to go through this process and each one of us has to go with it. There's no way out. I don't see any reason that we should be worried. 
whatever will happen is the will of God. But I have never seen in last 5,000 years any person making a direct claim which in our word is there. It's the most heavy declaration. It's a very declaration as I can say, I can prove that I am God. This, these two words do not. So I can prove to Mukande, my life is selfless for you, whatever that is. It's the most heavy declaration. It's not a small line. You don't understand the weight of it. And that's why Guru Amrath said, which I cracked up. Can you say it again? I will crack up again. <laughs> say it. I just, is it on? Oh. I just said that um, to, to pray for those who can't even pray. It was like, there was, there was the, like for all those who couldn't pray, and then there was like, how come you couldn't? And then I say, well, I'd pray for those who couldn't pray. So. Well, that's what it is at this time. We only invoke to God. We are not asking God anything. We are asking God. She has, uh, she has claimed it. Let it come true. That's what it's, it's, it's a very heavy tussle between uh, the God forces and the uh, forces of the ego, the devil forces. We, she put it, this, this dais, it's, uh, even when she wrote it, I told her, I said, Karta Purk, only you can write it, this line that I can prove to Mukande, and she will say what, what that means. I said, I shake. And I did that acting at that time. You know those, which when I do those legs sometimes, you know I'm very good at it. Well, that's our football practice, you know. We have to do that 15 minutes, otherwise you can't kick, and sometimes in the kick you can lose a joint, you know. You, it's a very heavy situation. Rather, in the morning we do it. It's a, it's a permanent habit with me to adjust my... Uh, electromagnetic field of the body with that little shake. And I dramatized to her, I shook myself, I said, and she said, uh, well, let us see. You, you do not understand as a Sikh sometimes what she has said in that. I can prove to Mukande, the god of liberation. It means the Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, three god on one side, Kattaparkar one. The battle is set. She said the battle with this line, and these are Akashic records, it cannot be wiped out. That's why we are chanting Har Har Mukande to send her the energy to see that the house of Guru Ram Das works. You people think it is just a personal thing of a girl and thing and a tarma and this and that. It's not that. It has nothing to do with it. Have you anybody have said Guru Ram Das is my personal guru, personal saint? You know, these things are, are, that's what I want you to understand this. All right, now we are going to meditate and send her the energy and the, we are going to do that Siri, her, you know, we did this morning in the class. You, you understand the meaning of Hari. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. It was very, very beautiful. Where is this uh, Hari Amrit? What is her name? She. Hey, how are you? Well, she's going to go for a little surgery and operation tomorrow. Could you just send her blessings so she can feel part of you and you can feel part of her, okay? 
Thank you very much. May the long time sun shine upon you.